Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to some more Second Encounter. Oh boy, it's been a week since I played this. Well, this section in particular, but I did just literally play through the, uh, like, entirety of the game just to prepare. Like, you know, want to make sure you guys are getting the best I can give you. And I want to make sure I'm at my peak, my apex, you know. I gotta get the pecs flexing, and we gotta be uh, doing the best we can. So, this section of the game, I think, is pretty challenging. I don't think it's as hard as the next section. There's a couple parts in here that I think are just utterly horseshit. I will say this flat out. Um, it's not the worst thing possible, but... Uh, it definitely doesn't feel as good as the last chapter. It's a lot more structured. It almost reminds me a lot of Quake. And I mean that in a good way. Um, there's definitely two portions here that I think are just absolutely ridiculous. Um, one of them is not very hard on its own. I think it's... It just depends on how you're approaching the level. And especially determining how efficiently you're taking care of other enemies and stuff so it's it's not as bad but it can certainly be god awful if you're not careful um although it's not as hard as the next chapter it's hard for all the wrong reasons i feel but it's still very very fun it's like i said i can't really hate the second encounter because every time it tries to be difficult it does kind of work the moments that are just absolutely atrocious are absolutely atrocious, I will say that. So, one thing that I will say, I'm not very familiar with uh, Middle Eastern mythology and all these sorts of things going on, so I feel totally just naked. I don't know how to explain it. Like, when it comes down to, uh, you know, the environments and stuff, I have no idea. I'm like, I don't even really know what Gilgamesh was. It's just a funny name. It's the guy from the... The Smurfs, as far as I know. There's that one song that's like, It's about bread! And then the bread before the bread. That's all I know. I'm very unfamiliar with any of this Mesopotamian era stuff as well. You think as someone interested in, like, ancient history as I am, I'd know more? But, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't really matter. It's not as impactful as the other, like, games I've played. So, personally, I prefer like, the Egyptian environments, that's something I'm always going to be honest about with Serious Sam, is it's close to my heart because of it, so... This is kind of what the environments are all going to look like as well, just these very big, open, like, areas. It's, like I said, very similar to Quake. It's not in a bad way, though. Like, I really do get a Quake vibe on this section of the game. And I haven't even mentioned this yet, man. The chainsaw just makes short work of the Zorg, and that's incredibly important, especially later on in the game, where we start encountering a ton of them in the next chapter. So, eh, we might as well pick that up. I don't see a reason not to. So, God, it's been a hell of a week for me. Thank God you guys don't have to deal with what I dealt with. I had to break the damn cat out of our house in the uh, middle of the morning on a weekend with nobody to fix it. So, it was a wonderful experience. So, anyways, I definitely prefer how the game feels at this point because there's way less gimmicks. Now, there is still some gimmicks to be had, but it's not nearly as bad as um, the first portions of the game in, like, the Mesoamerican areas. At that point, it's just... I don't know. Sometimes it feels like overkill in that portion of the game. But in this part, it's totally doable. I don't think it's as bad. I think they kind of, like I said, blew their load, really, when it came down to determining what to do. Uh, but I will also say, this section of the game contains probably the most arachnoids in the entire series, as far as I'm aware. I could be wrong on this, so don't quote me, but... I mean, I genuinely feel like this section of the game just has so many arachnoids, it's not even funny. Um, I mean, you're not really presented with any situations where it's just absolutely out of control, but it definitely becomes, like, second nature to assume that every single corner is probably going to have one behind it. Like I said, every single corner. Um, this section of the game also throws a lot, and I mean a lot, of uh, clear at you, as well as 
well, not these chainsaw assholes, but I guess the best way to put it is this is the game saying, all right, you've got the mechanics, let's do it. So as you can see, like I said, just everywhere. They're going to be all over the damn place. And I don't mind them as an enemy because in Serious Sam 2, you get the sniper rifle here. This makes things a hell of a lot more easy to deal with. I'm not really bothered by them, honestly. I never have been. They're kind of cheesy, but they're not the worst cheesy things you can possibly go up against. And I will say, in these tiny corridors, these, like, levels just, they kind of blend together to me. They don't really feel very interesting. And that's not to say they're bad, either. It's just, I've never... I've never thought Serious Sam had a very good flow when it comes down to, uh, you know, just these very basic kind of environments like this. Oh, come on. I'm not dealing with that shit. You're not dealing with that shit. You wouldn't deal with that shit. Let's get back to it. Um, so, oh, for God's sake. That's good enough. I'm not going to complain too much about that much health loss. It's not fun. Let's not beat around the bush. That was really dumb. But whatever. And as I said, there really isn't, you know, that many crazy gimmicks they try to throw at you at this point. And that's something I greatly appreciate. The platforming, this is about the extent of it at this point in the game. Thank God, too. I really... Jesus. I, I fully expected to fuck this up, if I'm honest. I really don't like the platforming in Serious Sam. I will never say it's the worst thing ever, but I'm not going to say it's very good. So, all right, anyways, like I said, this is a very fun chapter. It doesn't feel totally devoid of humanity, like the very beginning of the game, I think. And I'm not saying the worst things ever about the beginning, but the beginning definitely always makes me dread playing it. I just want to get into this kind of stuff, you know, just shooting the dudes. And I will say this, um... In terms of difficulty, this is as hard as the game's gonna get. I am playing a normal. As far as I'm concerned, anything past normal is just too damn much. You know, it's like... I don't mind playing a game on the hardest difficulty at all. I actually encourage it if the game is balanced properly. And I feel Serious Sam just doesn't have a very good difficulty balance. Because, I mean, this wasn't even introduced to Serious Sam 4. But you actually, I feel should be able to deal with more enemies, that's fine. I don't have an issue with that, because I think as long as the enemies are plentiful and the game mechanics are fun, I'll play a game on a harder difficulty. Like, I definitely think Doom Eternal and Doom 4 had it pretty much down. I mean, yeah, the, the mistakes are very, very slim. You're not allowed to really make any, but at the same time, I don't think it's terrible. I think it was justifiably difficult, in a good way. So, I am literally taking a lot of dumb damage, but if I'm also going to say it, a lot of this is fusion. If you're playing this in regular HD, it's not as bad. Especially the uh, vanilla game itself, it's not really that, that difficult. It's just a lot of it comes down to the engine I'm running it in. I just find it convenient. I just don't want to have to load up a separate game to play another one. Like, usually if I'm playing Serious Sam in my own free time, I'll just play them one after the other because it's just way easier. Very rarely do I ever play all of them in one sitting because, my god, like, seriously, I'm not going after that armor. I know it's probably not efficient to do so, but honestly, man, I, I don't care. So, what I was going to say is the difficulty in this feels very balanced. I don't have very many complaints. This is the main kind of environments we're going to be seeing, and I don't think they're terrible, so do not waste your serious damage that's right there on this. Um, trust me, this is not a good idea. Now, I will point this out, too, because I didn't actually show this off in Serious Sam 1. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Actually, it's, it's all the way over there. So, if you can see, I don't think you can really see it just yet. I'll show it off when I get over there. But, yeah, trust me, there's a lot of just BS that happens in this part of the game that... It's not really prevalent in the European areas because, like I said, I think they were just kind of done at that point. And I get it, you know, I'm not a game developer. I only work on, you know, mods, but at the same time, when you're just 
cranking out level after level after level after level, and you're working with the same engine for so long, there's only so many things you can really do. And I get it. But the Egyptian sections in Sirius M1 just feel so fleshed out. And then you get to these, which are just kind of experimental, I feel. And they work. But the European section is just kind of quick. I don't really think it's terrible that it's quick, but it doesn't really last very long. And I, I don't care. You could argue that, like, the game doesn't matter what it looks like. The graphics really don't matter to me. As long as the gameplay is solid, I don't care. So, I don't care if it's set place in, like, Missouri, Wisconsin. Okay, Missouri's a state, first of all. So is Wisconsin. But, <laughs> you know what I mean. I, I don't really care where it's set. As long as the shooting principles are fun and, like, the game feels good, I really don't care what happens where. I do prefer to have a lot of, like, environments I enjoy personally. Hence why... I think Serious Sam 1 really, really just, I love it. And Serious Sam 3, I'm guilty of it too. I absolutely love Serious Sam 3, mainly because, well shit dude, I love Ancient Egypt. Egypt is such a beautiful area to me in life. I've always wanted to go there. I've had a basically an Egyptian hard-on since my entire existence, so kind of maybe a little bit of bias here, right? But when it comes down to it, Serious Sam 4, I think it looked good, but I don't find Rome as interesting as an area to look at. I'm sure if you live there, you get what I mean, too. It's like when people see Oregon, they're like, oh, it's so beautiful. I'm like, yeah, I live here. <laughs> like, it doesn't phase me after a while, is what I'm trying to say. Like, I don't think it's bad to have variety in your environments, but... I don't know, Serious Sam 4 just, it didn't have a tone, I guess. That's kind of my biggest gripe with it. I always felt like the game just didn't have any coherent, like, anything. I know the last place takes place in the Ural Mountains, but it really just could have been anywhere. So anyways, you see that area over there? You actually can't go out there. If you start going out there, you'll die. It's really kind of bullshit. What Serious Sam 3 does, which I think is really cool, I think this also is in Serious Sam 1 as well. If you go too far, you start to take damage and just die, which is a little weird, but, you know, that's just what they could do. I'm sure it was just to make the game look impressive as well. Um, but at the same time, Serious Sam 3 has a really cool feature where if you start going outside the map, um, it starts spawning sandworms, which are unkillable. And you actually see one later on in the game which I don't want to spoil, but you know what I mean. I, I like how they handled it a little bit better. Um, but as far as the first game goes, I, I don't care. Just take damage, whatever. I think that Serious Sam 4 just kind of blocked areas off. There's a lot of areas in that game that just have, like, knee-high walls that you can't do anything about. It's like, oh, I can't go over that, okay. But then the, the downside is... The secrets are way harder to see in Serious Sam 3 and 4 if you're not paying attention. And I think that's... They're secret areas, I get it. You're not really supposed to find them, I guess. Unless you go looking for it. But a lot of it just seemed like, oh, there might be a secret over here on my first playthrough. And it was just like, oh, it's just a wall. Never mind. So, as far as environments go, I think these are pretty. I like the colors, the blues, the golds. It's actually very pretty. I actually studied... Um, the Middle East for a while, and some of India at one point when I was in school, but that was, you know, literally almost 10 years ago, so a lot of my care for it just kind of deteriorated. Like, I love the, like, sandy buildings that were made in, like, the Middle East. I just think they're so pretty. And Persian stuff looks really cool, too. I, I love all culture. It's very hard for me to say I like one culture versus the other, but damn, man, <laughs> Egypt, that's all I gotta say. Do I really need to say more? Like, Egypt is just so cool. Like, ancient Egypt specifically, I should say. But, um, yeah. And this is why I said do not waste your, uh, serious damage. Wait till you get to the, these kinds of points where the enemies are this dangerous, because if you don't, well, you're gonna have a bad time. And I don't think you want a bad time now, do you? So... It's so weird because you can tell I have serious damage on, but I still... I pretend it's not there because it's better to keep your rhythms in check, and that way you're actually using your muscle memory more. 
I don't normally use the rifle on clear. I just want to get him out of the way now. I find that also in Serious Sam, like, second encounter, I very rarely ever use the uh, rocket launcher. I guess that's just a side effect of the fact that, like, rockets have travel time. And a lot of the enemies are very spaced out in this game. As opposed to Serious Sam 1, where a lot of the enemies are much more tighter packed. So you have, you know, you can wait on the travel time a lot, like, more reliably. However, in this game, I feel... It's just easier to use the shotgun and the sniper. It's just the two most effective weapons for most every situation. And, yeah, that's that's kind of a cheesy thing, I get it. But, um, you know, it works, and I'm not going to complain. So, I'm also trying really hard to train myself to use the single shotgun more. Which is, admittedly, something I don't do in Serious Sam 4 and 3 very often. I think it's something to do with the reload in that game. I just instinctively don't pay attention to it. So when it comes down to Serious Sam 4 and 3, I really just use the handgun. It's just way faster. The fire rate's very consistent. And I'm trying to train my brain when I'm playing this game to actually use the, uh, you know, the right tool for the right job. Because I, I, I got so dirty with playing Serious Sam 4 and Serious Sam 3 that I'm just like, oh god, I just have to use this. Like, I want to use it, that's the problem. Where the hell is this? There he is. You'll notice that, like I said, not only are you going to fight a hell of a lot more Reptiloids, you're also going to fight, like, just a lot more of the tankier enemies at further distances. Which is what I think of when I think of the second encounter. Because a lot of the actual encounters usually have one or two of those mobs placed in very shitty locations where it's like, cool, I'm going to like, have to look all over this gigantic geometry to make sure I can see the little tiny green speck where a reptiloid's at. And that sort of shit, it does great on you, I will admit. But, I don't know, it doesn't bug me too much. I'm very used to this game, so I'm not very phased by the bullshit after a while. <laughs> like, I'm much more familiar with the second encounter, like, I'm sorry, the first encounter's enemy layout and stuff. So it's very different coming back to this after having played so much Serious Sam 3 and 4 in the past few years. Like, I regularly go back and play uh, Serious Sam 2. Like, I'm sorry, Serious Sam 3. I'm still kind of tired and I'm still getting into the flow of things. That's why. In case you couldn't tell, I took a break after each section because I'm not doing this game back to back to back to back. That is way too much mental exhaustion. I've got way too much housework and stuff I gotta get done. So, you know, I'd love to, but realistically, no. And I've gotta work on other things anyways. I'm actually gonna be working on a Mortal Kombat series, because the K in my name comes from Mortal Kombat, in case you're ever fear curious. Yeah, you're furious about it. Um, you know, it comes from that. And I've recently gotten into legal emulation, so I really... I want to play some, you know, Deadly Alliance. I want to go through all those games to show people, hey, yeah, the NetherRealm Studios games are not the greatest thing ever. By the way, respect your, your elders, right? I don't know, I really... I have a very bad opinion when it comes down to uh, NetherRealm Studios games. I really hated MK11. I, I have so many fucking shitty things to say about that game. Not from the story, because let's be honest, the story in Eleven is fucking... It's... it's something, okay? It's... it's legitimately something else, alright? When I have to say that Jax causes the entire world to go to shit, almost, because of a missed phone call, when you can admit that's terrible writing, join the club, you're using your brain, right? But... In terms of gameplay, I just didn't like Eleven very much. I know that's like, oh, what about your opinion now? No, it's still it's still the same thing. I don't like the inclusion of guest characters as much either. I much would have preferred... You know, I, I think this is... I agree with um, the fourth snake on a lot of things too, because we, we do share similar viewpoints. And I, I love his videos as well. If you haven't seen them, go look up the fourth snakes, um, like... 600 hours worth of wasted potential and uh, stuff for MK11 and like 9 and stuff. And he recently put out a video saying the reason that he doesn't do, you know, MK5 through 7 
it's just kind of because those games are a different company. They're not they're not active anymore. And Midway as a company at that point in time had already disbanded. Like they finished Armageddon and then their company just kind of shat itself and the leftover employees very few of them actually work for NRS and I don't really care. I mean, I think my problem with NRS is they try way too hard to make MK relevant, and it's kind of unfortunately... And I'm okay with admitting this as an MK fan. It's kind of fallen off in terms of relevancy, and especially in the fighting game scene, because... I don't know, like, other games do better things. MK has always been very basic, and that's actually why I like it. Um, I can explain to you the basics of an MK match from 1990, like, five or whatever, all the way to present day. Two people get really close to each other and they spam moves until somebody gets a very lucky hit off and then that little lucky hit causes the round to change, right? That is 100% the meta since, you know, the very first game. Or find a character, okay, how many people have actually played Mortal Kombat, not just said, oh, I watched all the lore, I know all the things of Mortal Kombat. Okay, how many of you actually played it, first of all? That's my legitimate first question. And if this sounds bitter, understand, I get it. There's people that play video games for the story, I get it. I totally understand. But when you're gonna say, oh, the game's good, having never actually played it, that's a bit different. Um, and I'm able to say this without rose-tinted goggles. I say goggles because, goddamn, the people that that play NRS games over the originals, they tend to forget the 3D, as they call it, era, which is what I... I grew up playing MK1 through 3, correct? Like, I, I mean, the first game I ever played was 2 on my Genesis, which I still have, by the way. I've actually gone into detail of this in a, a video. I've actually read the back of the box because I love how cheesy it is. Um, you know, those games are great, but they're very broken and they're very rough. Um, I watch a lot of, um, like, combo videos and stuff. I know that sounds terrible. I, I love combo videos for those games, but you see the same characters. Everybody, I've played MK3 online as well, so I, I know what I'm talking about as well. Um, a lot of the characters you only see are Nightwolf, like, Cyborg Smoke, occasionally Human Smoke, he's not too bad. Um, and then you'll see... Like, here's an example. The meta in MK3 is so hard, like, it's so locked in. You're putting yourself at a distinct disadvantage if you're playing as, a uh, Scorpion over Human Smoke, despite the fact they have virtually identically the same moveset. It's just the frame differences and stuff are so important in that game. Um, and that's the thing, people that don't play fighting games but only listen to the story and stuff and say, oh, the game's good, from, like, just a gameplay general standpoint, they don't understand that that's not the same thing as the actual game and how it controls. So, like, you could be like, oh, I love MK3, like, because they played the NRS games and they, they just have those nostalgias. Like, oh my god, Framp is throwing a fit. I can't really do much about that, honestly, except drag him in here and then have him open the door and leave. Um, so, <laughs> he's just throwing a fit because we're both doing things today, so... He's he's locked out of the picture right now. <laughs> he doesn't exist um, for, like, five minutes. Framps, come here! You can come in here. You're not going to get harangued, I promise. I don't know why I'm going in here. I never really care about secrets in this game anyway, so... I'm not really worried about what's over here. But yeah, everyone just goes, oh, MK1 through 3 are the best. It's like, no, not really. Uh, they're very rough. They're very unpolished, unbalanced games. Yeah, I was gonna say, you only see smoke, or cyborg smoke, or human smoke. Just say smoke in general. And you're only gonna see that character, Nightwolf, uh, maybe Striker, because he's got an insanely overpowered combo only in Ultimate MK3 because of the gun move. Um, you know, and that's, that's about it. You'll also see a shitload of Cabal. Um, Cabal's a fun character. He just has way too many fucking moves, in my opinion. That's my biggest gripe, is Cabal has just way too much shit that takes so much priority over every other person, um, and every moveset ever. 
I get it, people don't want to play fighting games because of learning things, but, you know, as someone who actually played a lot of MK in the day, like online, you know, offline, arcade, whatever, you know, I've, I've done it all. I've played MK4, MK2, 3, I've also played 1 in the arcade, and you might be like, but you're only 27. Yeah, but there's, there's arcades that exist, and people like to do little mini tournaments, and they like to have little competitions, you know, that's... That's what I'm talking about. And I'm not anything fantastic at MK, by the way. I will never say... I'd say my Reptile game in MK9 and X is actually very decent. I... I hate to say I'm good with the character, because I always know as soon as you say I'm good, someone's gonna be like, Look at my 27,000% frame-perfect combos that I'm able to execute in my sleep. And I go, Okay, yeah, you're probably better. Whatever. But I'd say I'm an average Reptile player um, in those games, because he does control very similarly. Um, I don't use Noxious. I think I think Noxious is okay. That's an okay variant. But you see what I mean? Like, the people that are like, oh, MK11 is the perfect. I'm like, the story is absolutely batshit stupid, and I, I have no idea why people like it. It's, it's so dumb it hurts. As a writer, it's painful. Um, God, that game just fucking... It's just a massive letdown, and it's a terrible ending to the game. The ending is just so stupid it hurts me. I I, I know it's like, why are you getting so upset? <laughs> it's because it's a series that I hold very dear to my heart, and it was just... I thought there was supposed to be a little health bar that shows... Yeah, there we go. Um, it's a series I hold very close to my heart, because like I said, it's, it's something I don't really do on my channel because... I don't really record console games until now, and it's only going to be PS... If you're curious, I really only played PS1 through 2. I I had a lot of, you know, like, friends we played, like, Call of Duty and stuff, but, you know, that's about it. I just played a lot of Call of Duty, Gears of War, Halo, up to Reach, and I played some Forza 2, so... That's about as much console on next-gen stuff at that time that I've played. So, you know, I'm not really... I don't really consider those as fun or classic or nostalgic as other games. They're nostalgic for different reasons, but... Because someone else is obviously going to have the nostalgia that I would have for... I don't know, like Gran Turismo 1, which I've been playing on the side because I fucking love that game. Um, you know, someone could have a totally different, like, perspective of it, right? But at the same time, I I can say that, like, yeah, the 3D MK games, they're not bad, bro. I, I can, without even thinking, say, like, yeah, they're fucking solid games. Except Deadly Alliance. Deadly Alliance is a very... I don't know, it's a very difficult to enjoy game. Because a lot of Deadly Alliance is very broken. Um, I want you to look up... I think you could probably just look on my channel. I've actually liked a video recently about Natara combos, and I'm like, yeah, dude, fucking, it was busted. Like, Deadly Alliance was absolutely one of the most borked games in terms of balance, because it had a power-up meter, and that's the thing, I was like, oh, x-rays are so cool, and I'm like, okay, why would you waste your meter on an x-ray? That is, it's, it's also, first of all, incredibly predictable. If you're going to... And by the way, this is like a condensed version from Serious Sam 1, which I actually love. Um, so, this is why I'm like, yeah, there's a difference between a person that observes fighting games and a person that actually has played them. So, when you're playing somebody online, right, you're playing Billy Willy, who's like fucking god tier, whatever, right? And then you have John Tiny Dick, right? So, John Tiny Dick who's mastered this character's frame inputs in his mind. He thinks he's the best guy ever, because he can do a 75% combo with, with an X-ray attack, but that's the only thing he knows, right? Like, X-ray attacks are cool from a perspective of a casual gamer, or someone who has very little experience in competitive games. Um, but they look cool, right? Like, oh wow, the screen gets dark and you break their bones. Yeah, that's cool, but in an actual match, you know which character has what setup to do that. Like, I can tell you, like, 
as a reptile player or a scorpion player, you expect when someone's gonna do an x-ray. And you'd rather, honestly, if you're playing any fighting game, you should really never save meter for super moves that long because your opponent will also instinctively, and this happens to me too, and I played a lot of MKX online, I gotta sneeze. <sighs> oh my god, I couldn't pause, that was, I don't know why I just didn't do that, right? Anyways, as someone who played a lot of X, you know when someone's going to do something. You're not stupid. If someone's saving meter, you know they're gonna try and do a combo, lock you in. And guess what, if you breaker their combo and you shove them back, then their entire strategy just went down the drain, right? So I'd rather use two meters to use a breaker, right? That's that's just my opinion. I'd rather use breaker because it's just more efficient, right? I would much... Where the hell is this, this chainsaw bastard at? Um, I would rather save my meter and use it for something like two EX moves or a combo breaker, right? Because it's just a better waste. It's just better to not waste it and also just use it effectively, right? Or people like, oh, fatalities are so cool. I love their fatalities. Their fatalities are so cool. It's like, you do realize that's just the finishing thing you do at the end of the round. It's not the actual game. That's not, that's not what the fighting game is about. The fighting game is about outsmarting your opponent through memorization and physical manipulation. That's like, I've also... Keep in mind, I am not a competitive fighting game player. Like, I play, but I'm not, like, that fucking into it. Um, I'm an FPS player at heart, unfortunately, right? Um, so, when people go, oh, look at the fatality, it's like, yeah, that's really cool, but that's, that's just a very small portion of a fighting game. That's why you'll also see people say, oh, you just memorize a bunch of buttons. Well, yeah, technically you do. I'm not even gonna say that's not accurate, but you can memorize an entire move list on your character, but have no idea how to play them. That's that's something I've seen a lot of casual gamers not really understand, is that's why it's called the mix-up and stuff. But speaking of mix-up, that's the end of the level. I'll see you in the next one.